नमस्ते एवरीवन वेलकम टू द चार वर्क पॉडकास्ट दिस इज योर होस्ट कुशल मेहरा जस्ट लेट मी चेक इफ द ऑडियो इज वर्किंग फाइन एक बार चेक कर लेते हैं ऑडियो सब बराबर है यह इट ऑल लुक्स गुड ऑडियो सीम्स फाइन एवरीथिंग लुक्स गुड ऑल राइट सो बिफोर वी स्टार्ट द मोनोलॉग एज ऑलवेज लेट मी कंग्रेच थैंक एंड गिव अ शाउट आउट टू ऑल द मेंबर्स फ्रॉम द लास्ट टाइम वी डिड द मोनोलॉग तो देखें जी कौन कौन था एक तो ये है ना ये बड़ा स्यापा हो गया कि ये पेट्रियन वाले हैं ना अभी इन्होंने ये घटिया किस्म की फ्री मेंबरशिप का आ, कर दिया है तो बड़ा दुखी करते हैं ये लोग सो so, हाँ जी तो अतुल तिवारी ए जी ए जी एच ए एस टी थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर बिकमिंग अ मेंबर ऑन पेट्रियन फिर जी फैन मो पे कौन थे फैन मो पे हुए थे आपके देवल रैक्स एंड डॉक्टर ध्रुवन ध्रुवम नाना भटी थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर जॉइनिंग द मेंबरशिप प्रोग्राम एंड ओके नाउ वी गेट ऑन यूट्यूब सो इन ऑन यूट्यूब इन द लास्ट मंथ अनुरोध मिश्रा वी हैव अमल शिल क्यू पी डब्ल्यू नितिश कुमार नितिश कुमार जी मेंबर हैं हमारे दिनेश कुमार ओके नवीन रेड्डी then we have levi sunny paul trinath narayan bhupendra liquidity vaji va liquidity kartike nayar kapil akhil cap and then another akhil akhil square ragman rohit nk ved abhyankar shyam सतीश देन भूपी चौधरी ऑल राइट सो दीज वर दंस हु जॉइन द लास्ट मंथ वंस अगेन देर आर टू टीयर्स ऑफ द मेंबरशिप प्रोग्राम ऑफ द चारवक पॉडकास्ट देर इज अ सीकर्स टीयर एंड द स्पीक विथ मी टीयर द स्पीक विथ मी टीयर इन केस ऑफ पेट्रियन वुड बी फाइव डॉलर्स एंड अबाउ इन दी अदर टू देर आर क्लियर टीयर्स अनफॉर्चुनेटली वेन आई हैड द the patreon setup which was 4 years ago or 3 years ago i did not put tiers and i it just the changing of the whole system is too much of a pain in the ass but the seekers members get access to a lot of paper discussions like i think 7 or 8 paper discussions 9 book discussions and currently we are covering the rigveda the speak with me uh gets everything that the seekers tiers get and they get to speak with me once a month in a ama and also they get the entire understanding and experiencing religion series which has already covered the entire valmiki nam ramayana right now we are in the ninth chapter of the manusmriti over and above that if you are a current member of the speak with me tier and are already a member for 3 months uh, my books going to be out any time this week i'm just waiting for the amazon pre order link to be approved i don't know that's what the publishers told me i don't understand this thing so uh, i'm the last person who can answer it definitively and uh, I, i i'm assuming in the next few days the pre order link will be up and i'll share it on social media so if you are a uh, member of the speak with me tier currently for more than 3 months and intend to continue then you can just send me a screenshot of that at contact@kushalmehra.com once the book is released and uh, i'll try to send you signed copies of the book in india it's not going to be an issue the only issue might happen outside india let's see how we can work that out we'll try to figure something out for outside india guests also so as you see on the screen and the ones who are listening to the audio only version it is contact c o n t a c t at @kushalmehra k u s h a l m e h r a.com so you can send a email uh, which has the screenshot uh, the kindle edition usually comes i think usually that's what uh, i've understood the pattern is 2 to 3 weeks after the hard copy version is comes obviously for marketing reasons for a from a publisher's perspective publishers you usually um tend to wait they want to sell hard copies first and then the kindle edition comes out that's how the usual trend is 
I don't know what's going to have what what's the exact date when the Kindle edition will come out but I'm assuming it's going to be after a couple of weeks or 3 weeks once the hard copy thing is done and uh, that's about it and uh, now uh, as far as the monologue is concerned um this is how it's done I will speak for I guess 20 25 minutes half an hour depending on how much I speak I don't know I've not a written script so usually I I stick to around 30 minutes but sometimes it crosses and then uh, if you have any questions uh, related to the monologue or any questions in general you can use the super chat option or the fanmo option and you can ask your questions over there and i will look at them and i'll answer your questions post that i will screen the live stream if there is anything that i feel like answering i'll answer there if i don't feel like anything worthwhile answering i'll just say goodbye and i will wrap this thing up now now we get on to the monologue of the day which is titled conflicting political interests now why uh, why did i want to talk about it so i'll give you a brief idea uh, this is uh, not a vote for bjp or a vote for x or a vote for y monologue this is i mean i've never hidden who i vote for but this is not about that this is about uh, more of a brainstorming thing there where what is an ideal political situation for a society what is an ideal political situation for a polity what is how does a good political system function how does a good society function what is the ideal form of representation how much of uh, group representation and how much of individualism does a political system have now um few things that we might have to explain like uh because india uh is a unique country which has so many political outfits so as far as we are concerned uh, all political parties in india have to be registered with the election commission of india and uh, there are de- clear demarcations as to what defines a national party and what defines a re- state party which we in uh, colloquialism call regional parties in india now national party is a party that secures 6% of the total votes in lok sabha elections or assembly elections in four states right 6% of the votes in the lok sabha elections or assembly elections in four states and wins at least four seats in the lok sabha they are recognized as a national party that is a qualifying criteria as per the election commission in india as far as the regional party qualification is concerned that is a party that secures again at least 6% of the total votes polled in the election of the legislative assembly which is the vidhan sabha and at least two wins two seats and is recognized that is recognized as a state party now as per this criteria from my research uh, in india we have more than over 2000 political parties in india which includes eight national parties and more than 50 recognized state parties so more than 2000 political parties exist but 50 are recognized as regional outfits and eight are recognized as national outfits now these eight parties have written them down are indian national congress bharatiya janata party nationalist congress party communist party different forms of communist parties bahujan samaj party rashtriya janata dal all india trinamool congress and the national peoples parties so these are uh, um also called state parties and like uh, over uh, overlapping hota in me it is very weird why they are considered both at, in many cases which i found very interesting now uh, going into the history because it's very important to understand with the nature of state parties in india what kind of state parties exist in india so we have to go all the way back to the 1950s in india where we started uh, having identity politics in its first ever way in india was when state parties started in the form of linguistic diver the uh, linguistic division of states so when we had linguistic division of states starting in the 1950s where basically people of certain geographical units of india that wanted to have representation in the national polity in terms of having states carved out where let's say in a certain area telugu speaking like the recent one is telangana right uh, which was also done on the basis of i think language in a major way language was a major driving factor in that we can start all the way uh, in in let's take in the case of punjab right punjab originally was himachal punjab haryana 
but then they were divided again those reasons were clearly linguistic because haryanvi speaking people were different himachal had a different language spoken over there too and punjab had punjabi majority of punjabi speaking people in fact even in the case of assam and um, and bengal you have this assamese uh, students movement and uh, many other things where what is one of the biggest reasons is they don't want to lose their assamese identity because uh, the agitations always say that uh, why are there we don't want the nature uh, the assamese speaking nature of our state change so we don't want bengali to be imposed on us so that is one of the factors of uh, uh, regional outfits then obviously we have uh, caste based regional outfits in india where you have uh, the samajwadi party rjd many other parties in fact even uh, uh, mayawati ji's party bahujan samaj party is a caste based party then you go down south you have the dravida munatela kalgam and many other political outfits that are language based down south and uh, this this is another uh, so now in this case uh, just full clarification in the case of telangana and andhra pradesh it's not just the language there were some cultural issues also but language was also one of the factors i just want to give but the factors are different now there are regional uh, political outfits or religion polar religious political outfits also i don't know if many people know even the muslim league exists even today in india the all india majlis e muslimin aim im is a religious party um so they they are there so if you look at most regional outfits in india ka- communists are based on communist ideology uh, trinamool congress i don't know which category would we put the trinamool congress like they are communists on steroids is is the version the aam aadmi party is based on an idea of welfareism uh, it's funny you, you might come back and ask me but then why is samajwadi party not based on welfareism well samajwadi party was based on a bit of welfareism but a lot of it was that uh, yadav muslim vote bank strategy so that was also a major thing in the case of shiva sena it was a regional party based on marathi language based identity and marathi regional identity shiva sena is that uh, maharashtra navnirman sena of uh, mr raj thakre is another political party that we can talk about that is uh, out there on the basis of that so i'm just trying to state there are by and large regional outfits in india are either geography based caste based religion based economic model based language based or a bit of a uh, you know a bit of this a bit of that a bit of that a bit of that it's it's a mixture now it's also important to look at the entire you know political history of india in terms of different eras so can we say 1952 we had the first elections from 1952 to 1964 we we call it the congress era right where jawaharlal nehru was alive and congress was just the dominant political party of india like dominated the entire political landscape it was the political party and others were really i mean there were other political outfits at that time but honestly they just used to be like uh what is the word in english that we can call them it was like more like lobbying groups they were lobbying for issues in the parliament but they really had no political say congress was just ruling the roost now the change in the indian political hap- par- landscape happens post the death of jawaharlal nehru so basically 1964 to let's say end of emergency that era so would be calling 77 when the janta government comes that is the next era uh, where basically we had uh, uh congress losing majorities in many states if i remember correctly i think it was eight states where congress lost its majority uh, uh, in the 67 elections if i remember correctly uh, and and do correct me if i'm wrong on that and um, you know they they lost a quite a bit of their vote share then regional parties start growing over here and then obviously in 69 the congress split happened where indira gandhi took over the control of the reins of the congress and the congress i was there and then morarji desai left the there and then we had the rise of the jp movement and and uh, that happened and then obviously the emergency happened and then from 1977 to 1980 we had the janta party experiment where multiple political outfits like chalk and cheese everyone just came together and they formed this uh, multi party 
गवर्नमेंट विच वॉज द जनता गवर्नमेंट एंड बेसिकली तीन साल में गिर गई वेर चौधरी चरण सिंह बेसिकली पुल द रग देन वी हैड अ होल डेकेड ऑफ कांग्रेस एट द सेंटर बेसिकली फ्रॉम एटी टू एटी नाइन अंटिल राजीव गांधी जी demise and and the change in the political system then and the attacks started happening and then you had if you remember a lot of presidents rule were imposed in that decade bahut sare president rule hue the uh, at that time uh, telugu desam party had come up in the 80s uh, i don't remember the exact year i i don't know it was 82 or 84 i don't remember exactly when they had come up they they were the opposition party uh, then from 89 onwards we had uh, after the death of rajiv gandhi till 2014 was the the true coalition era of indian polity where uh, you know we had so many governments like uh, this i had to write down because there were so many uh, governments at that time it was like kitne ko yaad rakhunga main it was so many and and then at that time we had so many prime ministers like uh, आई थिंक बीजेपी भी उस उसमें एक बीच में एक गवर्नमेंट बनाने आ गई थी लाइक नाइनटीन नाइनटी सिक्स टू नाइनटी नाइन वी हैड थ्री जनरल इलेक्शन थ्री नाइनटी सिक्स एंड नाइनटी नाइन में बेसिकली पॉलिसी वॉज प्रिटी मच हंग एंड देन वी हैड वाजपेई वन गवर्नमेंट एंड देन वी हैड वाजपेई having his proper government in 2004 and then from 2004 to 2014 we had end, uh, basically U- upa1 and upa2 and now we have nda1 nda2 of narendra modi and we have kind of gone back to the era of the early 1952 to 1964 where you know we are consolidating again all over again um, to a national party where uh, uh, you know it's kind of um, back to the old days but uh, i also had uh, you know written down how many prime ministers we had <laughs> at that time it was just like crazy the number of prime ministers we had that was also quite a fantastic list of prime ministers and i mean if you go at, go ahead and look at the entire list itne sare to prime minister the ki aadmi hi thak jaye prime ministers ko gin gin ke gin gin ke and this like khatam hi nahi hote so obviously jawalan nehru was 19 let's say 1947 onwards to 64 then shastri ji 64 to 66 then indira gandhi 66 to 77 morarji devsai 77 to 79 charan singh 79 to 1980 then again indira gandhi 80 to 84 and then on the, on her uh, assassination happened from 84 to 89 rajiv gandhi then vp singh 89 to 1990 um uh, and then chandrashekhar from 1990 to 1991 narasimha rao 91 to 1996 atal bihari vajpayee 1996 mein ek term hota hai jo ek aad mahine ka hota hai fir hd devagoda 96 to 97 then indra kumar gujral 97 to 98 then again atal bihari vajpayee comes back 98 to 2004 manmohan singh 2004 to 2014 narendra modi 2014 to the current gulzari nal nanda and um, uh basically agar aap bol rahe ho he had become twice as a caretaker prime minister in the 1960s and that was just as a kind of a jagah bharne wala um kind of uh, a caretaker prime minister before somebody they had anointed to cover so gulzari nan nanda ji ko main count nahi kar raha hu un prime ministers ki list mein although i know he was also a prime minister so now we know the political history of india so in such a scenario wow, today there is a lot of debate around what is the ideal situation of how do we run a political uh, political system now in in my last podcast with uh, tushar i had raised this point that uh, it's a very sensitive issue to even discuss in india where uh, if you look at it from an idealistic scenario the more representation you have in a democracy the better off you are so in principle i'm actually absolutely for uh, regional parties and regional representation because i think at times um, national parties cannot understand um, regional aspirations as well at times i'm not saying it's the rule 
but at times it can happen and in that kind of a scenario i think regional parties they could be one trick ponies or one issue political outfits but they do hold a very key role in in a in a general political system now those regional parties uh, full disclosure i did not even get into the municipal level because you know what if some political parties come up in the future and they may not be really a huge force to play in the vidhan sabha or the lok sabha level but when it came to the municipal elections whether gram panchayat or uh, municipality elections right urban local body elections or rural local body elections they could be winning those elections so at a conceptual level i think regional political outfits are a very 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 important factor in any uh, any political system so nobody is saying that uh, regional political parties should not exist they should not uh, they should uh, they should be destroyed that is not at all what i am trying to say in fact i am trying to say the complete opposite of that what i am trying to say is that today the way the country is structured what worries me the most is that there is an active conflict between national political outfits and regional political outfits in india which is not a healthy sign according to me uh first of all uh the first biggest sign of concern or has to be the state of the national uh, indian national congress the indian national congress was the political art which is why i narrated the entire political history of india where the indian national congress right up to 2014 was the political outfit in fact i would say right up to 2019 was the political outfit of india but since 2019 indian national congress has pretty much ceded its space or its uh, voice in the national Uh, discussion and today as far as national political outfits are concerned there is only one real political outfit at the national level and that is the bhartiya janata party as an indian i listen again a bjp voter is saying this i am very clear i'm going to vote for the bhartiya janata party in this coming election when my voting happens right i'm going to vote for the bhartiya janata party and i have multiple reasons which i'll explain in a monologue which will be called why i will vote for the bjp at an opportune time but my point is that having said that this this monologue is not about that this monologue is about conflicting political interests and the way this country is going and the way we have the absolute regionalization and destruction of the indian national congress it is a worrying sign for india because we cannot be living in a country where you have only the bjp having a national vision and then bjp is competing with a bunch of parties which are either downright religious bigot bigotry se laden which is the case of all india majlis e muslimin aim im or outfits that are literally a one trick pony like we believe in a caste identity and we will take that caste vote or literally a one trick pony in the form of that we hate bjp and we will appease muslims the indian national congress used to be a flawed but alternative national vision for india the indian national congress why having more than one national party national party in the real sense a party when i say national party i gave you the definition of the election commission now we get to the real business end of this monologue to me a national party is not someone that has x number of votes or x participation here a national party is someone that has a national vision the indian national congress today has reduced itself to a, to i don't know what rahul gandhi has abandoned amethi rahul gandhi has to go and fight in an election in wayanad because that's the only place where he knows he can win because the muslims are the majority voters there the regionalification of the indian national congress is a cause for worry for every well meaning indian it doesn't mean you should vote for the congress it just means that the congress has lost its national vision which is a very worrying sign if you are someone who cares for india 
forget about your political party and its affiliation now you might come back to me and say but kushal there is aam aadmi party what is aam aadmi party's national vision what is aam aadmi party's vision for india if you look at the statements of the aam aadmi party's delhi unit and you look at the statements of the aam aadmi party's punjab unit it is an absolute comical case where the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing the aam aadmi party punjab unit allows trouble burning the aam aadmi party delhi unit says pollution ho rahi hai oh bhai baat kar lo na aapas mein now if the aam aadmi party like the pjp or the once congress had a national vision had a national plan they would have tried to fix this issue because they think like a regional party they don't fix issues which is why conflicting political interests have a you know while they have a good side which is why i started by supporting regional parties but if this is the direction the indian political landscape is going we need to start worrying when the congress has reduced itself to a party that only panders to the muslim when the congress has reduced itself to the party that says batla house and counter is fake when the congress has reduced itself to a political outfit which had that atrocious uh, uh, caste uh, religion based uh, nyay manifesto doc image i mean that scared the shit out of me by the way i don't know how many of you have seen that let me see if i have that damn thing i think i had bookmarked it also for uh, like you know every day getting up in the morning kind of a scenario and torturing myself that okay the congress actually believes in this or maybe i must have removed that uh, bookmark in uh, over a period of time because that used to torture me you know i still have it oh my goodness so this scares me because what is the congress is now beyond me this image is the classic example of what is wrong with the congress hissedari nahi hai ginti karo social economic and caste census arakshan ka hak 50% cap on sc st obc reservation will be removed through a constitutional amendment sc st sub plan look at every single thing kisan nyay nari nyay yuva nyay shramik nyay the congress is basically this is the congress manifesto does this manifesto sound like that of a national political party with a national political idea does this sound like that i in my opinion no is the answer an overwhelming no because if congress was a national political party there would have been a national security section there would have been a national unity section it's nothing is there there would have been a illegal immigration section there would have been a growth based plan economy look at what they are promoting 30 lakh new central government jobs according to a jobs calendar how are they going to do that one year apprenticeship apprenticeship for all educated youths at 1 lakh per year paisa kahan se laoge i mean gig economy kya gig economy you are roshni 5000 crore startup fund for youth my point is what is the congress doing and this should scare the shit out of you if you are a well meaning indian citizen it should share the shit out of you because there are conflicting interests when it comes to national parties and regional parties the regional parties are only looking at they have to win a state so they don't care many times about national security issues which is which is the sad part which is what we should be worried about and to see the congress reducing itself to something like that is a very problematic aspect that every well meaning person of india should be concerned about it 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 is a deeply concerning thing if you are a citizen of india the congress has reduced itself to a regional political outfit ideologically that's what i'm trying to get so in such a scenario what is the ideal way out between a national party and a regional party the regional parties are needed to represent local aspirations that let's say a caste group comes to power politically and only those caste groups get government jobs and other caste groups are not getting government jobs 
that could happen that that actually in fact that happens all the time and that that is done more under regional outfits less under national outfits so that's one of the conflicting visions that we have let's say if you have a yadav muslim combine coming up in the up you know who's going to get jobs in the government postings you know it damn well they're going to give it to the yadavs and the muslims so others are left out so what happens as an answer to that in in uttar pradesh kashi ram ji and bahujan samaj party comes up what what happens under bahujan samaj party people of that side get representation and they start filling seats but the point is in such a case of conflicting interest because all regional parties are actually based on nothing but group affiliations and they have broken the biggest difference between a national party and a regional party is the national party is compelled to look at every indian as an individual voter because they have to pander to everyone across india because that's just the way the cookie crumbles for them they have to attract voters of different kinds a regional party on the other hand only has to appeal to people of a particular area and and remember this why do i keep saying that for a country like india having a national vision is very important it and and that is why i i took you back to that era of those multi party coalitions from 1989 to 2014 and boss that that was not a good time or we had many other eras i mean remember the policy paralysis at that time it was so hard to pass anything just imagine if india alliance comes to power the national party versus the regional party political conundrum is basically the bjp versus the indian indi alliance if the indi alliance comes up actually a vision like what the congress shares comes up we we are broken as a society then we are not looked at as indians we are looked at as bhumiyars or yadavs or jatavs or hindus or muslims or telugus or tamils or punjabis or sikhs we are looked at like that the vision when you have a regional party is a by default group lens vision it's a very dangerous vision it is needed in short doses but it cannot be the vision for a society for a polity for a nation you have to have a national political outfit because when a national political outfit will come up like it's the case of bjp or was the case with the congress they are compelled to balance it out they are compelled to do it just think about it the kaveri water crisis right which is in two southern states karnataka and tamil nadu kaveri water crisis if all these regional outfits they came to the parliament right do you think they can have a solution to the kaveri water crisis because where do their incentives lie in the case of the karnataka political party they are only representing karnataka interests in the case of uh, now you might say in karnataka only congress and bjp come but congress has reduced itself to a regional party now they are no longer having a national vision which we saw in the document and on the other side you have the dravida munnetra kalgam or the ai admk they have no incentive to care for someone and i say this with full responsibility the dmk doesn't care for what happens to the people of bengal they only care for tamil nadu the people uh, governing bengal right now they don't care for what happens in tamil nadu they might pretend to form an alliance but this is not a healthy direction the country is going there is no incentive in the indi alliance political system to care for india It, it it only has india on paper in the name but if you study the nature of political outfits in india it's a very dangerous game we are playing yes maybe in the 60s in the 70s in the 80s there was a need for more and more regional representation there was that need because maybe we were such a shoddy group think society that we needed these things at that time to have a say but if we really want to take the quantum leap now in the next 20 to 30 years politically economically socially we have to start breaking down the grip of regional politics and group identity politics in india if we don't do that if we don't do that 
we are going down a very dangerous rabbit hole that every single indian is going to repent and pay very dearly with which is why only only the bhartiya janta party being an option is actually a net loss to india if we had conflicting visions at a national party level we would have had a better option as a polity but such is the tragedy of india that today the regional parties actually control the entire narrative of the former national party congress so we are left with nothing but the bhartiya janta party in today's political scenario there is only one political outfit in india that actually has something on the line in jammu and kashmir and in tamil nadu in both areas from the top to the bottom you have an annamalai there and in kashmir right now we have governor's rule but eventually whenever we get rid of it that's the only political outfit in india that actually or there are bjp representatives or used to be in jammu jammu was basically bjp dominated basically bjp wahan jeet jati thi pura that's the only political outfit that actually cares and tries to you know bring people together through its own way i'm not saying the bjp is perfect and the bjp makes mistakes obviously i mean i just saw the news today of uh, vijender singh joining the bjp i mean uh, <laughs> i don't know what to say to that uh, one of the funniest moments was uh, i mean i just i i started cracking up because i don't know how many of you saw this but uh, somebody asked vijender singh what happened here i mean you just have to see this video to basically see what the bjp has uh, reduced itself to so just listen to this uh, wonderful video of mr vijender singh uh, when he is asked uh, by a journalist jab tak ye kaha ja raha tha ki aap rahul gandhi ji kal video retweet kar rahe the jisme modi ji ka mazak uraya ja raha tha ab whoops i'm sorry i don't know why this happens sometimes and then i have to reset it and then replay it i'll 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 uh, refresh the page and uh, replay it but yeah it, i don't know why it happens sometimes but uh, for those who don't understand hindi <laughs> i i'll do the translation later on but uh, i mean this is some next level legendary stuff it's it's hilarious tak ye kaha ja raha tha ki aap rahul gandhi ji kal video retweet kar rahe the jisme modi ji ka mazak uraya ja raha tha ab sawal uth raha hai ki boxer ka man badla kyun 24 ghante mein wo kehte fir main so gaya uske baad fir main ekdam utha to mere ko laga ki nahi yaar aap galat kar rahe hain aap galat platform pe ho to aap bharatiya janata party mein aaiye aur yahan se aap kehte aap sahi disha mein jayenge isliye fir main main bharatiya janata party mein aaya so so the reporter asked a question to vijender singh an olympian a medalist a boxer who was uh, till yesterday retweeting rahul gandhi that uh, why did you uh, you know you were retweeting rahul gandhi what happened to you suddenly that you changed <laughs> that you changed your political side and then in less than 24 hours you have become a bjp representative he's like i went to sleep <laughs> that was his literal answer i went to sleep <laughs> and then i woke up and i was a new man and i was a changed man what does it say to you about the congress i played this hilarious clip to make my point is that the congress has reduced itself to a regional party and how is it good for india it's not good for india this is horrifying for india it's actually very scary that every single congressman whenever they get the opportunity they just dump the congress and they join the bjp and when they join the bjp and if somebody asks them why did you join the bjp i mean the answer is just i went to sleep and i got up and i realized this is the right thing to do but then why did he leave like listen to this video of rahul gandhi and his views on dharavi this cannot be a national party person speaking but listen to this ये दारा भी आपका है ये आपका है एंड अगेन सो आई गेस द रूल इज एवरी टाइम आई प्ले द वीडियो द फर्स्ट टाइम इट हैज टू डू दिस एंड देन आई हैव टू रिफ्रेश द पेज एंड देन इट प्लेज इट सेल्फ अगेन वाह 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 शाबाश 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 सो ये मेरे साथ ये पता नहीं क्यों होता है मगर एंड इट्स नॉट एन इंटरनेट इशू आई गेस आई लव टू But delete the cookies or something uh, or of twitter i guess it's a twitter a cookie cache issue 
but it happens it's kind of weird but it does happen but yeah so this is uh, rahul gandhi when he was visiting mumbai and uh, dharavi ye dharavi aapka hai ye aapka hai aur ye aapka rehna chahiye yahan pe yahan pe aapko आपका जो स्किल है हुनर है उसको सपोर्ट करना चाहिए बैंक के दरवाजे आपके लिए खोलने चाहिए सो बेसिकली दिस वाज अ शॉर्ट क्लिप वेर राहुल गांधी से इज एवरीथिंग दैट अ नेशनल पॉलिटिकल आउटफिट शुड नॉट से ही से इज एवरीथिंग दैट अ नेशनल पॉलिटिकल आउटफिट दैट वुड बी अपोज टू ही इज पैंडरिंग टू अ small constituency of dharavi which uh, basically is going under redevelopment uh, i think the adanis have the project of dharavi if i remember cur- currently um and it's hilarious to say the least that uh, that he is making uh, all sorts of uh, claims that let's say you know this the, what this reminds me of rahul gandhi doing this reminds me of a regional political outfit of that particular area fighting an agitation this cannot be a national vision so why did i show these two three video clips to you is just to show that there are conflicting political interests and while we need regional political outfits to talk about regional political aspirations even local political aspirations sometimes at the municipal level but it has to be complemented with a national vision and today in india we are going through a very sensitive phase where we basically have no political outfit that that actually has a national vision other than the bharatiya janata party and in such a scenario my question to all of you is how are we going to deal with these conflicting political interests but because there are many quenched questions that uh, we need to ask ourselves like what are the pitfalls that we are as citizens likely to face that if all of our national political aspiration eggs hypothetically are in one basket that is the bjp like there is no political outfit today that has regional uh, non uh, national aspirations other than the bjp the congress clearly doesn't the congress has reduced itself to a regional political outfit now it play it plays the regional out politics of that area it should not it should be supplementing their regional our politics with a national vision and telling them listen we are the national party we will solve your regional issues too when we fight the state elections but the congress has reduced itself to that so that is question number 1 i have no answers that what are the pitfalls of having only one national vision holding political outfit today which is the bharatiya janata party what happens there when we have an all powerful center with only one political outfit what happens then then what happens to actual regional aspirations can the bjp fulfill those regional aspirations those are the questions we will obviously have to ask ourselves i don't know what the answers are i don't know i, uh, I am not someone who's going to pretend to know every answer like many other youtubers do i'm not going to pretend my job through this monologue was to ask questions not to give answers but we as citizens of india we need to have that uh, question because currently we are on the other end of the spectrum and we are correcting the other end of the spectrum is so many regional outfits including the congress coming together pretending to have a national vision which they don't now that is also not an ideal scenario you cannot have the solution to an all powerful bjp cannot be a mishmash of regional political outfits the solution to an all powerful bjp has to be another national political outfit with a national political vision it cannot be the indian alliance which is why right now we have the worst of both worlds as indian citizens we have the worst of both worlds and we are just picking the lesser evil which is the bjp but in an ideal scenario what should have happened was it should have been national vision 1 versus national vision 2 but what we have is national vision only one versus multiple regional visions and 
if these kinds of people come to power, the country is going to be balkanized. The country cannot function. Because we have seen what happened in the 80s, in the 90s, when the country was literally in a policy paralysis. Now, you might come back, no, but Manmohan Singh government did policy. Ye wo. Listen, yeah, Vajpayee also managed it, but they still had a significant chunk of seats, right? 170, 200, this range was less than that. Where did Can you tell me right now in the India Alliance, one political party that can get 100 seats? Do you think the Congress will get 100 seats? Do you think they can? And if there is no political party, that can get 150 plus seats in the opposition. How can a, a mishmash where somebody has 30 seats, somebody has 40 seats, somebody has 10 seats, somebody has 5 seats, how can that be good for the country? In this current scenario, which is our political scenario where we have conflicting visions, where on one side we have a national vision which binds India, you may disagree with the vision, with the BJP's political vision. But the point is that if we want to function as a country, we have to function as one unit. There is no other political option currently in India where we have anyone else other than BJP. Today's monologue was nothing but asking you, the voter of India, or you, someone of Indian origin. You might be living outside India. I want your answers. What is the solution to this crisis of conflicting political visions? What is the solution to this? How, how does one revive a political outfit like the Congress, which refuses to revive itself? Where I can guarantee you this. Once the BJP will win the third election, which looks like most likely they're going to win, six months after June 6, you will see so many people dumping the Congress and jumping ship and joining the BJP that it will not be funny anymore. We already have so many people that are dumping the Congress and joining the BJP. Vijinder Singh was just one of the many who has joined in the last few weeks. Uh, in Punjab, we have seen Ravneet Bittu. That was a great addition, by the way. But think and ask yourself this question. There are conflicting political interests. And in this conflicting political interest, what could be the pitfalls if we had an all-powerful center or the power was completely devolved to the regional political parties? Because that is literally what we are having right now in India. We either are going towards an all-powerful center or we are going through an absolute chaotic situation where there are just regional political outfits with 50 seats, 20 seats, 10 seats, 5 seats, which will lead to another set of chaotic situations. Obviously, the former is better than the chaos of the regional uh, situation, but we should be really worried as Indians that this is our political option when we study the political interests of India. I apologize, I crossed my 30-minute limit, but I had to ask these questions. I want your answers in the comment section. I want your answers in the comment section. I want, and don't write emotional answers. Digest what I have said. Think about it for a while and then write down your answers there. And, and then ask yourself that where is the alternative to the BJP? And if this is the alternative to the BJP where they have even in a part, why did I give the Amadmi party example? Aap Dilli has conflicting interests with Aap Punjab. Ye apni stato ko nahi chala sakte, ye desh ko kaise chalayenge? BJP has managed that very well. Congress used to, albeit half ha haphazardly, but they used to. We cannot have the Indy Alliance. And if you're not scared of that, I don't know what else you're going to be scared of. Now I'm going to start taking questions. So there was one. Somebody says, I agree and I'm just scared. Currently, there is no competition to the BJP. But if there were, isn't the ED thing antithetical to this? Would it not discourage willing leaders from going against the BJP? Listen, uh, first of all, uh, as far as the use of the ED is concerned, there is nothing new in this. I mean, in my last podcast with... Uh, 
uh, Tushar, I had clearly said that this use of the ED was weaponized actually by the Congress. It is the Congress who weaponized this thing. You can't say, why is the BJP doing it? The BJP will do it. You have draconian laws on the books. They're going to use it. The point is that what were we doing as citizens of India when Congress was, which is why I always oppose every single draconian law, every single law, whether it's 295A, whether it's 153A, whether it's the sedition law. All these laws, they are very dangerous. They are antithetical to a free, freedom-loving country. But we don't believe that. We only believe in one thing. Mera Admu's law ke niche jail mein nahi jana chahiye. And my opponent should always go to jail using those same laws. As long as that is going to be used, which is why when you are in Bengal, the TMC uses it against you. Which is why the BJP uses it against people in their states. This is not a solution. And we are in for a very bad time if we keep continuing to use these horrible laws. And that's just the way things are. And I'm not saying the BJP should do it because the Congress does it. I am saying the BJP will do it because the Congress did it. Because that's just how politics is. Uh, the BJP is not breaking the law by using the law. The BJP is using the law as it is available to them. The scenario is that you have to fight it out in the courts of law if you are the one on the other side. And you have to come out a winner. Now, in the case of Mr. Kejriwal, from whatever uh, I have read in the media and whatever we know through reportage, it's a pretty darn indictment of that man. So all the best to Mr. Kejriwal is all I can say. But this is the nature of politics in India. And this is the nature of politics across the world. Look at how the Democrats have gone after Trump using every trick of the trade possible. They have tried every single thing that they could under the American law to screw Trump over. What do you think Trump is going to do when he comes to power? If he wins the election, what do you think Trump's going to do? You think he's going to spare uh, Biden and his son? You think he's going to be like, nay, nay, TKR, I'll be the bigger man. Have people forgotten how Narendra Modi and Amit Shah were hounded by the then Congress government when they were in power from 2004 to 2014? Has everybody forgotten that? You think Mr. Modi and Shah might have forgotten that? Do you think they don't remember how they were hounded? Politicians don't forget. Politicians have an elephant's memory and they shall have their revenge. Or you remember how uh, Jailalita ji was uh, deeply disrespected by the DMK. What happened when she came back to power? What happened to Mr. Karnanidhi? You think that was right or that was ideal? It happens all the time. It's human nature. You reap what you sow. And that's been the system. Uh, you think the Ahmadmi party, when they got control over the Punjab police, because that was the first police that actually Ahmadmi party had control of, right? And, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, people must have thought uh, that... Uh, Oh, you know, Aam Aadmi Party believes in different politics. Look at the amount of notices Punjab police has served to people who criticize the Aam Aadmi Party, especially YouTubers. Every single political outfit in India is against freedom, is, is authoritarian. They want to control you. They want to try to manipulate your life. You just have to pick your authoritarian in India. In our case, as Indian citizens, we just pick our authoritarian. That's all we do every time because nobody in India at a fundamental level, we do not like freedom. We do not like freedom of speech. We do not like things that challenge our thinking. We do not like things that take us out of our comfort zone. We want positive affirmation and comfort on a 24 by 7 basis, which is why we just keep finding excuses 
by saying oh look at this oh look at that the entire narrative whether it's uh, democracy is in danger what, you cannot even objectively make your case because every single example of democracy is in danger i gave you the entire political history of india how many times did the congress impose precedence rule during that 80s period why do you think i gave you the entire political history of india everything that has been done by the congress bjp has not even done one tenth of it in terms of brutality the level of brutality is just mind blowing under the congress for years so you just look look at how the bjp has made the scst atrocities act even more draconian they they did not reduce the draconian legislation they increased it they made it even more draconian so this is an on average authoritarian society your political outfits are all on the left your political outfits including bjp is on the left your political outfits are all draconian and authoritarian they don't believe in freedom conceptually you i am just honest enough to say i just choose my authoritarian because if my authoritarian is power is in power kam se kam sala mai relatively safer ho and while i do that strategic move i keep pushing for more freedom more freedom more freedom so that hoping one day that my authoritarian gives me more freedom and and then once i have more freedom nobody can do anything to me it's just a fact it doesn't mean we are like pakistan or bangladesh no i'm not drawing that scenario but you can still be authoritarian even authoritarianism has degrees of you know authoritarianism pakistan is way more authoritarian than us it doesn't mean we are not authoritarian so let's not lie to ourselves let us just stop lying to ourselves is all i am requesting aap apne aap ko jhoot na bolein in cheezon ke upar main bjp ko main bhi bjp ko hi vote karta hu magar mujhe achhi tarah se pata hai ki wo bhi authoritarian hai isliye main zyada ye politicians se baat karna podcast pe main ikka dukka se kar lunga magar main kyon nahi karta hu zyada aisa to hai nahi ki meri podcast famous nahi hai abhi mere bhi numbers to abhi decent hai ekdam bade nahi hai magar decent hai ऐसा तो है नहीं कि मुझे नहीं पूछते होंगे अब पूछते हैं बंद कर चुके हैं क्योंकि अभी उनको समझ पड़ चुका है कि मैं ना ही बोलने वाला हूं इसके लिए अब मैं नहीं करता हूं क्योंकि मैं तंग हो चुका हूं क्या आप मेरे को एक बात बताओ ना बात करके क्या मतलब है मैं क्या विजेंद्र सिंह से बात करूं मैं क्या बात करूं उनसे एक दिन पहले वो राहुल गांधी के रिट्वीटे मार रहे थे क्या रीजन होगा टिकट नहीं मिली होगी उधर से जहां से चाहिए होगा यहां आ गए मैं नहीं बोल रहा हूँ वो गलत है ठीक है भाई आप पॉलिटिशियन हो आपके इंटरेस्ट है आप अपने इंटरेस्ट देख रहे हो मगर मैं तो सिटीजन हूं मैं तो मेरे इंटरेस्ट देखूंगा वो मेरे इंटरेस्ट में और एज अ कंटेंट क्रिएटर मुझे तो समझ ही नहीं पड़ता मैं ये 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 मतलब ये ये जो टाइम पास जो हम करते रहते हैं कि ना जी ऐसा नहीं होना चाहिए वैसा होना चाहिए मतलब मैं करूँ क्या पॉलिटिशियन से बात करके मैं उनसे कोई भी क्वेश्चन पूछूंगा एनी क्वेश्चन दैट आई आस्क अ पॉलिटिशियन वॉट इज द पॉइंट वॉट आंसर डू आई एक्सपेक्ट बिकॉज आई नो दे और और इंडिया में काहे की पार्लियामेंट्री डेमोक्रेसी है बॉस वो एंटी डिफ्लेक्शन लॉ लगे हुए हैं डू यू थिंक योर मेंबर ऑफ पार्लियामेंट रिप्रेजेंट्स द विल ऑफ देयर कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंसी इन इंडिया आस्क योर सेल्फ दिस फ्रिकिन क्वेश्चन डू यू इन योर राइट माइंड करंटली इन द करंट इंडियन पॉलिटिकल सिस्टम थिंक दैट योर मेंबर ऑफ पार्लियामेंट एक्चुअली रिप्रेजेंट्स यू भाई पार्टी में पोती है आप वोट अपने मन, मन से करते ही नहीं हो आप अपनी पार्टी के मन से करते हो क्योंकि इंडिया का पॉलिटिकल सिस्टम ही है वो नहीं है जैसे अमेरिका का सिस्टम है कि वहां पे कई बार रिपब्लिकन अपनी पार्टी के अगेंस्ट वोट कर देते हैं और डेमोक्रेट अपनी पार्टी के अगेंस्ट वोट कर देते हैं वहां पे होता है जैसे एक बार जॉन मैकेन ने किया था फॉर एग्जाम्पल या एक ये रिसेंटली दो डेमोक्रेट्स ने कर दिया था और डेमोक्रेट्स पास नहीं कर पाए थे सोचो आस्क योर सेल्फ दिस कैन एन इंडियन मेंबर ऑफ पार्लियामेंट डू दैट वो बेसिकली वो नरसिम्हा राव गवर्नमेंट के बाद के टाइम का जो कांड हुआ था उसके बाद से एंटी डिफ्लेक्शन लॉ लगा दिए योर योर मेंबर ऑफ पार्लियामेंट इज नॉट रिप्रेजेंटिंग योर कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंसी का विल इन द पार्लियामेंट दे आर रिप्रेजेंटिंग द विल ऑफ द पोलिटिकल पार्टी दे बिलोंग टू सो इन इंडिया वेन यू आर सिलेक्टिंग अ वोट और अ कैंडिडेट यू हैव टू थिंक इन द लाइन्स ऑफ 
कि भैया ये पार्टी का मैनिफेस्टो क्या मेरी विल को सपोर्ट करता है कैंडिडेट तो ठीक है पार्टी के बेस पे करना होता है यू डोंट वोट द कैंडिडेट इन इंडिया यू वोट द पार्टी इन इंडिया अनलाइक अमेरिका वेर यू डू वोट द कैंडिडेट यहां पे नहीं होता भैया यहां पे भूल जाओ यहां पे कोई डेमोक्रेसी नहीं है वो वाली यहां पे अलग सिस्टम है तो पहले अपने सिस्टम को समझो और उस सिस्टम के हिसाब से अपने वोट करने की टेक्निक निकालो इसीलिए कहता हूं चुपचाप बीजेपी को वोट करना और कोई ऑप्शन ही नहीं है तुम्हारे पास तुम हो नंगा नहाएगा क्या निचोड़ेगा क्या और कोई ऑप्शन नहीं है बीजेपी को जाके ही वोट करना पड़ेगा अगर देश को बचाना है तो नहीं तो कर लो इंडी इलायंस को वो, वोट और मर जाओ अपने आप को ऐसे खंजर दो दो ऐसे इधर मार देना एक इधर मार देना और खोप देना बैंड बच जाएगी एनीवेज और कोई क्वेश्चन है बहुत लंबा आंसर हो गया अभी मैं लाइव स्ट्रीम में भी थोड़ा बहुत देख लेता हूँ यू कैन आस्क योर क्वेश्चन ऑन द सुपर चैट बिकॉज दे पॉप अप इन अपरेट पेज देर इज अनो क्वेश्चन सो आल रीड दैट फ्रॉम माई फोन um oh no it's not a question is somebody has joined the membership nutritious alligator gar okay thank you for becoming a member you could have asked a question if you want to to in in fanmo but anyways um mm okay let's see i'm going to start looking at random comments if there are any questions other than that once again if you want your questions to be answered faster uh you will have to use the super chat option that is the fastest way of getting your questions answered because when it comes to the live stream most of them are usually comments and i i don't care about the comments i only care about some meaningful questions if there are uh, meaningful questions otherwise i will just uh, scan through them and wrap up and go tata bye bye that's uh that's a plan i'm going to go all the way to the top to the first comment and then from the first comment i'm going to make my work my way down uh, down i will uh, that's why it's taking me a bit of time because there are a lot of comments here so it just takes a bit of time for me okay let's see uh, we're right up so somebody has asked when is your book coming like i said uh, any time this week the pre orders will be out and uh, let's say let's see we'll take it from there mm. भैया ऑनलाइन ब्रॉडकास्ट करना बुक लॉन्च हो सके तो या वी विल वी आर प्लानिंग समथिंग लेट्स सी कैसे करेंगे आई डोंट नो हाउ दैट टेक्नोलॉजी वर्क्स वी आर गोइंग टू टेक सम हेल्प फ्रॉम पीपल सो वी विल वी विल लुक एट दैट Okay. <laughs> Somebody has said Rohit Sharma party versus Hardik Pandya party. <laughs> I don't know what the hell is that. I mean, I don't. I don't know what the hell was Sanjay Manjrekar telling everyone to behave. That was so weird. Just so weird. Uh, just looking at questions. Mm, no questions. A lot of comments. A lot of comments. Okay, there is another super chat. So, any comments about the low-grade war between Kushalians and Mutra Mitrans on who is Kala? I don't know. Is there a war, war about that also? Very good. I mean, uh, if if Abhijit wants to win that war, I'm more than happy. If that's what makes him happy. Um, somebody says aam aadmi party has khalistanis in their party so i can't vote for them in 2012 i supported aap now i can't but think about punjab tell me right now who will speak for indian aspirations and punjabi aspirations regionally and blend them together who is in the best position to do that can you think about it like what do you guys think how do we blend the regional and the national aspiration my take on arranged marriage bhai aapko shaadi karni hai matlab i have no problems with arranged marriage i i just think arranged marriage is uh, uh, the first version of tinder <laughs> more glorified tinder mm. Mm. 
ओके कैन हिंदुत्व बी सक्सेसफुल इन द साउथ एब्सोल्युटली इट विल बी कैन नहीं इट विल बी इट्स ओनली अ मैटर ऑफ टाइम हिंदुत्व विल बी in a way the competition is good for consumers a good composition is good for voters yes it is but uh, anand bhagat my worry is that at a national level competition where national visions have to be shared where is the competition congress is no longer a national party competition ke parameters bhi to dekhiye na aap that's what i'm saying <sighs> what can i as a common man do to protest against the hypocrisy of the bjp whitewashing everyone who joins the party hmm. you can just laugh at it Mm, let's see but isn't the reason we think congress has no national vision is because it's so small and not the other way around no the congress always had a national vision it's because the congress abandoned its idea of a national vision that it has reduced itself to where it is the point is the congress refuses to introspect and that's what we should be worried as as indian citizens i mean how can you not be worried as an indian citizen that the congress has completely given up on the national vision mm. let's see what else do we have a lot of comments very few questions ओके वन मोर सुपर चैट कोई बोलता है भाई चार रुपए की पेप्सी कुशल भाई डॉट 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 अभी मालूम नहीं उसके आगे क्या बोला होगा आई कैन ओनली रीड व्हाट वाज रिटर्न why is kejriwal arrested when it's not even proven in court isn't it wrong uh that's not how it works under this act mm aur kya hai bhai what are your views on the broadcast bill i've not read the bill so i can't share any views on it as of now uh, thoughts on ekam bahujan sanatani party as a viable opposition and call ajit bharti on thursday uh, well uh, who gets called is shams call not mine uh, i don't tell him what to do and uh, i don't have any thoughts on ekam bahujan sanatani party because uh, वो जितना जल्दी ऊपर आए हैं उतना जल्दी वो नीचे चले जाएंगे hmm. 
बिफोर समबडी आस्क मी ये बिल अथॉरिटेरियन है वो बिल अथॉरिटेरियन है कसम से बोलूँ तो इंडिया का तो हर बिल अथॉरिटेरियन ही लगता है मेरे को What are my thoughts on a party's ideology diluting due to them allowing people to win them votes but not necessarily share their ideology? My thoughts are that at the end of the day, a political party's sole job is to win elections, and uh, they will win elections. But here's a very interesting thing. So let me tell you, it's very easy for a congressman to join the BJP. Very hard for a BJP person to join the Congress. And I'll let me explain why. why. If you are a BJP person, right? You only join primarily through its early years because of ideological affiliation. Because BJP is a truly ideologically driven party. Like, oh, corruption, karte bhi hogi hai unke leaders agar na. Magar even when you meet them off the record, like I've met so many of them, right? I'm not making this up. They actually are true believers of the ideology too. They believe in the ideology of Hindutva. They believe the Ram Mandir. बनना चाहिए दे बिलीव इन काशी मथुरा दे बिलीव ऑल दोज थिंग्स एज इंडिविजुअल सो मेनी टाइम्स आई मेट दम ऑफ द रिकॉर्ड एंड वी हैव कैजुअल कॉन्वर्सेशन वेर दे आर लाइक कंप्लीटली अनसेंसर दे आर ट्रू बिलीवर्स सो फॉर देम इट्स वेरी हार्ड टू डम्प द बीजेपी एंड गो टू दी अदर साइड बिकॉज दे जिस कांट बट फॉर द कांग्रेस दे बेसिकली दे हैव गिवन अपन एवरी थिंग सो इतने सारे जो लोग भर भर के जो मतलब वो जिसको बोलते हैं ना होल सेल के भाव में बीजेपी में आ रहे बिकॉज उनके कोर में कुछ है ही नहीं वो यहाँ पे भी चले जाते हैं वो हवा का झोंका कभी यहाँ चले जाता है कभी वहां चले जाता है सो इनफैक्ट बीजेपी वाले को दूसरी साइड में जाना बहुत मुश्किल होगा उनको बीजेपी में आना बहुत आसान होगा ये ये बहुत बड़ी प्रॉब्लम है This is a good comment. To blend the regional and national vision, we need to be significantly richer society, more in touch with our heritage, not just Hinduism. I actually appreciate this comment. ये बहुत ही सही है. What are your main criticisms of the BJP that you believe they fo- they should focus on but are not paying? Where wait for my podcast on why I will vote for the BJP, where I'll actually share my criticism of the Bharatiya Janata Party too. so wait for that and sundar kidambi thank you for joining the membership program don't you think one nation one election would force congress to have a national agenda no i don't think so why would they have a national agenda just because of one nation one election i don't agree with that at all uh what else wow i'm getting a call Am I coming to IIT Mumbai soon? I want to have a conversation with you. भैया ऐसा है कि अगर मेरी book आए तो IIT आई टी मुंबई के तुम्हारे किसी ग्रुप को बोलो मुझे इन्वाइट कर ले बुक की डिस्कशन के लिए वहां पर बुक की कॉपियां खरीद लो और मुझे बुला लो मैं आ जाऊंगा नहीं तो मैंने क्या करना है आके बीजेपी वॉज एन आइडियोलॉजिकल पार्टी नहीं बीजेपी स्टिल इज एन आइडियोलॉजिकल पार्टी आप बीजेपी के चार नेताओं को नहीं जानते हो मैं बहुत सारों को जानता हूँ it still is an ideological party uh i'm living in europe at the moment i feel that the understanding of hindutva is quite abysmal any suggestions for spreading awareness i mean i've made many suggestions many times you can there are many books you can start by reading uh, political hinduism soul and sword um by hindol sen gupta start there you can suggest savarkar by vikram sampath and many other books are there so it's not just one there are many books that are available Any thoughts on tax reforms for middle class? भाई हमारा कुछ नहीं होना मेरे thoughts ये हैं कि हमारा कुछ नहीं होना है हमारी ठुकी हुई है middle class की 
बस हमारा हैश टैग सेड लाइफ है और कुछ नहीं है हम्म और कोई है प्रश्न बीजेपी इज करप्टेड इन अ नेशन सपोर्टिंग वे लाइक सीसीपी और करप्टेड लाइक एंटी इंडियन मेरे को आपका प्रश्न ही नहीं समझ पड़ा तो मैं क्या आंसर दू इसका Do you think it should be harder to form a political party like Carder should be huge across multiple states? Will this curb regional divisions since one has to? I don't. I don't like the idea of curbing people's rights to form a political outfit. Like, why can't you have a municipal political outfit? Let's say, for example, hypothetically, uh, I'm sorry. I'll put that question up again. Uh, it was by Ashutosh Bajpayee ji. So Ashutosh ji, let's say you are a political outfit that only cares about Mumbai. and you only fight municipal elections in mumbai now and your once you fight uh, mumbai and win mumbai the first thing you should fight for is an elected mayor like i don't know why mumbai mayor is not a uh, powerful like mumbai should have a powerful mayor that calls the shots for mumbai city similarly in the case of delhi what delhi is whatever it is delhi delhi wale delhi ki jaane main mumbai ki baat karunga mere shehar ki but i i think we should not do that i think we need these parties because we have conflicting interests at a municipal level at a state level at a at a national level but uh, how, the discussion should not be to reduce the number of parties the discussion should be how do we blend these interests conflicting political visions i think sometimes we tend to go on the harder side i i get scared when we try to you know take a hammer and go around smashing everything that uh, uh that is not the right solution in my view which is why i constantly say that this monologue is basically a plea to indians that bhai jaago mare par hai hum log yahan pe matlab jaag kab jaagenge yahan pe mare hue log jaagte hi nahi hai pata nahi unko kya uh, ye ek authoritarian tendency se pyar hai is desh mein meri samajh ke सच में बोलूं तो मेरी समझ के बाहर है मुझे मुझे आज तक नहीं समझ पड़ा है व्हाई द हेल डू इंडियंस लव अथॉरिटेरियनिज्म सो मच लाइक व्हाई डू दे लाइक इट व्हाई डू दे लाइक बिग गवर्नमेंट सो मच आई अंडरस्टैंड इन अ पुअर कंट्री लाइक इंडिया यू नीड सम लेवल ऑफ वेलफेयरिज्म यू नीड सम लेवल ऑफ द इन इन अ वेरी सेंसिटिव नेबरहुड लाइक इंडिया समटाइम्स विद एनिमीज लाइक पाकिस्तान एंड ऑल ओवर यू नो लाइक चाइना ऑन breathing down our necks we need some national security provisions but boss there has to be a limit like you can't even criticize religion properly in this country you can't criticize politicians properly in this country and and indians are just fine with it they don't even flinch they don't even flinch they they think it's just ha nahi hona chahiye abhi kyon nahi hona chahiye they don't even think they don't even have a second thought to something as uh, i mean kya bole abhi in continental europe in general a bunch of journalists from india writing for loony lefty media outlets are instrumental in spreading anti indian na- anti modi narratives how does one combat that well, the best way to combat that in my opinion is to become an economic powerhouse because once you become an economic powerhouse they will dance at your tunes because everybody at the end of the day uh, um you know it it is all downstream from paisa paisa and only paisa so if you are smart enough you should always aspire to become an economic powerhouse duniya jhukegi basically how do you convince yourself to take time out for leisure do you feel the urge to keep studying endlessly out of interest for a particular no i mean you should always have a very disciplined life in my case it just comes naturally to me i'm very disciplined like i have hours in a day where i do x y z and i just do those things accordingly and i don't know i mean i've just lived a very regimented life all my life so for me these i don't even come across these problems in 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 that sense 
I have fixed hours for fixed things and I do that daily. And that's just the way my life is. And uh, I just, uh, you know, live my life accordingly. I don't, I, I can't answer this because this is something that I don't face as an individual. So I can't answer it. When is your podcast with Adit coming out on statewide election? Uh, uh, Adit and I are doing the podcast. Let me check the calendar. Uh, yeah, this Friday, the Lok Sabha uh, uh, election podcast uh, is this Friday. Adit and I are doing it. Why should there be no restriction on freedom to criticize religion? If you know that Tumara Sanatan se juda ho jayega, so wouldn't that mean that state authorities are forced to protect you? Uh, see, uh, I have many times addressed this as I call this the Sartan se juda straw man. Do nothing. Go on Google Trends and check criticism of Islam ke trends, criticism of the Prophet of Islam ke trends, and all these trends and tell me if they are reducing or increasing and then on the other hand where is the sartan sajda increasing it is basically at a flat line level wherever it was in fact it anything it has reduced because state capacity has increased pehle jyada mare jate the abhi kam hote because pehle wo kar pate the abhi wo kar nahi pate so i don't know why this is used as an excuse for every single time when I make the case for free speech. I don't know why. It, it, it is the worst argument. Because statistically, the criticism of Islam is increasing. The amount of atheism in the Muslim community is increasing. But people use this as an excuse because they don't want Hinduism with, to be criticized. Actual reason is that we don't want Hinduism to be criticized. We just give it to Islam. We should be honest to people. Which is why I say Indians are authoritarian. They just don't like it. Unko badi problem ho jati hai. Hai mere baare mein bolte. Vijender Singh joined BJP. Who's next? Sanjay Singh. Me yar aisi matlab. Main bhi bol bhi nahi sakta ki nahi hoga. Kyunki koi bharosa nahi hai. Koi bhi aa jata hai. Magar shub shub bolo is all I can say. Matlab Sanjay Singh bhi aa jayega. If I want to invite you for a talk to my college, will you come? I mean, first of all, A, where is your college? If it's in Mumbai, then it has to be uh, right now about my book. B, your college association has to buy a few copies of my book. Then only I will come. Otherwise, what will I do here? It should be around my book, the subject. If it is outside, then who's going to take care of my travel and everything? So you can email me. And I will answer there. Not authoritarianism, but strong decisive leadership. Uh, bollocks. It is literally authoritarianism. They want strong decisive leadership. But when you mean authority, when I say authoritarianism, it doesn't mean Indians want North Korea. No. There are degrees of authoritarianism. And at multiple levels, Indians want authoritarianism. You may not like it. But it's true. You don't like it when somebody says, you mean I, an Indian, likes authoritarianism? Yes, you do. Many do on average. Mm. Do you think the wrestlers issue will have any impact? A lot of people, at least on social media, felt disgruntled with BJP protecting Bridge Bhushan. Um, Voting issues are based on what is raised a month before. That's what usually influences voting patterns. At least my experience is this. Uh, okay, ji. Or to kuch dikhi nahi raha hai mujhe. Sare prashna aapke answer kar diye. Hmm. Do you think Raghu Ram Rajan's recent criticism of the government is politically motivated or genuine? I don't criticism I don't know whether uh, what his criticism is. So I can't answer whether it's genuine or political. Uh, so I don't know. 
कितने की है मेरी बुक और कहाँ मिलेगी और भाई अपलोड तो होने दो अमेजोन पे प्री ऑर्डर के लिए तो जब प्री ऑर्डर के लिए अपलोड होगी तो आपको पता चल जाएगा कितने की है हम्म चलो जी सारे क्वेश्चन ले लिए आप लोगों के इज अ स्ट्रॉन्ग मैन गवर्नमेंट द ओनली वायबल ऑप्शन फॉर इंडिया टू बी ऑन द डेवलपमेंट ट्रैक You don't need a strong man government. You need a government that believes in law and order. Uh, that's the difference between a strong man government and a law and order based government. That's that's my answer. Somebody says BJP authoritarianism is a problem to democracy, but Kerala CM jailing people to criticize him and professor in Bengal being jailed for seven years in Bengal is free speech. Listen, all of it are bad. This has been my constant criticism of the discourse in India. All of them are bad. But what do you do? Anyways, we'll wrap it up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and children of all ages. जो भी हो आप, जो भी आप gender हो आपके पांच हजार, पचास हजार, जितने भी gender हो आपके. Once again, thank you very much for tuning in to everybody who tuned in on Twitter and on YouTube. आजकल Twitter में भी काफी लोग join करते हैं, मगर उनको प्रश्न पूछने को नहीं मिलते हैं. तो अगर आप को actually में अगर join करना चाहिए, तो you should have joined on YouTube if you wanted to uh, uh, ask your questions. But ठीक है. सानू की एज ऑलवेज थैंक यू वेरी मच टू एवरी वन हु आस्क द क्वेश्चन इट्स इट वॉज फन इंटरक्टिंग विद ऑल ऑफ यू फ्राइडे को वी विल डू द पार्ट टू ऑफ आवर लोकसभा कवरेज पॉडकास्ट वी विल स्टार्ट विद दी अदर स्टेट्स दैट वी हैव डन वी हैव मेनी थिंग्स टू डिस्कस uh there okay somebody has asked my thoughts on the ladakh issue with sonam wangchuk is he a villain listen i don't know enough so i'm not going to comment on it um so uh i have not studied it uh, so i am not in a position to answer it but yeah uh, as always thank you very much uh, the book will come out in the, in the next few days we're just waiting for the approval of the pre order link from amazon and all the other websites once it's up we will share it on all the social media channels of the publisher and my own personal social media channels so hopefully you guys will go and buy the book as i said if you are a speak with me tier member for more than 3 months and are an active member we will send you a signed copy of my book and um, as far as this podcast is concerned you know this podcast runs only on a membership driven basis so if you can do support this podcast by joining the membership program on whether on youtube or on patreon or on fanmo jo bhi karna hai jaise bhi karna hai join karo if you want to buy the kuch merchandise of the charbuk podcast you can go on kushalmehra.com buy the merchandise there you can go to kadakmerch.com you can buy the merchandise through kadak merch also or if you want to do nothing of that just like this video subscribe to the channel below and leave your comments in the comment section that also helps the channel and if you are an audio only listener and you can leave a rating on the audio platform on spotify i think you can like the follow the channel like like the channel on i app itunes you can also leave a positive review over there and um, i will see you guys on friday tomorrow if we are doing the sham sharma show i don't know if we are but uh, as always it was a pleasure talking to all of you online take care bye bye